Planning Commission meeting to order. Mm -hmm. We have a motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, sure. Um, so we have an agenda. Can I add a motion to adopt the agenda? Mm -hmm. Or does anyone want to adopt the agenda? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, can we move uh, six up to uh, right after this and do that first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a comment on the agenda, please. And then. Um, may I may I make a comment on the agenda, or you're not recognizing? Okay. Oh, okay. So. Um, I was actually surprised that you're having a presentation here, and only five people, members of the public, were invited. This is a preliminary presentation, and the Brown Act specifically requires accurate descriptions of what uh, is in the agenda. So I don't believe this passes muster. I'm I'm upset about this. Let's see if uh, I, I mean I'm interested in in uh, sharing this with the general public, but. You know, if you really want to serve the public, you have to involve the public. And as you know, we had, what, 40 people here uh, previously? So it really appears to me that you're trying to hide whatever you're doing here, and that's really not a good way to, to start. Uh, I'm sure Bill's got some great ideas. I trust Bill, and I think you all have you know, good ideas, but it really is the public that, that we serve. Thank you. So, uh, we will adopt the agenda switching item number six to item number three, and then everything else moves down. Okay. Can I get a motion? Is that? Do we that? Yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion to, uh, for that change? As described? So uh, with that, we will move uh, to item number, the new item number three, uh, which is discussion of parking and specific investment mission update. Thank you. Uh, to be very clear, uh, there is a, thank you, hey John, there is a, no action items on here. There is no decisions being made. This is a, a very first look. I've been working with Bill pretty extensively for the past uh, several weeks now um, and have got it to a point where uh, we've been able to kind of put some conceptuals behind uh, I wanted to share that with the Commission I did reach out to the five houses that live immediately behind the uh, area where the current facility is and where we're looking at uh, the replacement and invited them personally to come down it is a public meeting to Stevens point it has been noticed uh, the public is obviously allowed there will be more meetings Obviously, there is no decisions being made. This is simply a chance to uh, talk to the people who live immediately behind them. That's why they personally were reached out to, and I'm glad that a handful of you came. So, thank you. Um, with that said, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier to you all, I mean, it's been a year since we've gone through this, so we've done a lot of legwork kind of up until that point to give a very uh, bullet point synopsis. One thing I will say on the this has been discussed at almost every board meeting. Um, a lot of things have been published, put in writing. A lot of conversation has happened at a park and rec uh, setting, but more in a board setting. Um, on our website for this, which is on uh, under the park department, uh, everything that has been published and presented to the board is actually consolidated into one document. It can be easily found chronologically and read through, um, please. I highly encourage you to look at it. Tell me if you have any questions. Uh, I'm easy to track down. Um, in terms of you know just bullet point progress to date from that last meeting, um, I uh, I have met with and shared some of the initial site ideas and concepts with the environmental regulatory agencies in an informal setting. Uh, we had an informal planning consultation with the county. Um, we've conducted a biological assessment of the area. Um, that report is actually on their website as well. I'm in process of completing a cultural uh, resources study 
for that area and we'll be looking at further environmental uh, initial studies that will go into that as well. Um, as far as uh, next steps and timing goes, we're still working on what is known as a site plan review application. That's a formal application that will go to the county uh, that will contain all of those documents that I just had plus site plan uh, layouts. Um, and then it will go through their formal determination and planning process from there. So notices will go out from them. Um, we will be putting out other notices and we will have another public meeting more specifically as a uh, larger uh, meeting just for that purpose as a, as a hearing, kind of discussing where we are and looking at the studies we've done prior to submitting the site plan uh, application as well. So. Uh, in terms of timing, uh, Mr. Borough had asked me about timing. Ideally, we're hoping to be able to get through all of that by the end of June and submit by the end of June to the planning uh, department. I cannot give an estimate on their behalf on how long it takes. I'm envisioning probably a best case scenario of at least a three month turnaround before any sort of determination. They go through their public outreach processes as well once it gets into that step. Um, so there has, to be very clear, there has been no determination from the county other than some informal guidance uh, as well as pointing to their land use codes and regulations uh, from the land use department. Uh, from there, and it also captured in that biological, if everything kind of worked out right, we were able to go to RFP in the late summer, early uh, fall actually falls in good with the timing from the biological assessment report that came in that uh, you know, due to uh, various wildlife and biological assessments, they say really kind of October is an ideal time to be doing this project, and hopefully that allows enough time to get it out there done prior to the rainy season kicking in. So that's, that's where we're at now. I think you'll see we've made a lot of ground since the last time. Um, I try to update that website as much as I can when information is available, and like I said, this document is a public document. It's on there. All this has been published in public board meeting packets prior. Um, it's simply a convenience to have it all in one place. So I recommend going through and looking at it and it's dated by what date the meetings were on. Um, and that's kind of where we are in terms of timing. I'm gonna ask Bill, who like I said, I've been working with and we wanted to share it with the PNR commission prior to it kind of going with the board and I thought this is a good opportunity to ask you guys to come down. So again, I appreciate your time. Uh, and I told you as neighbors right there that I would keep you as aware as I can and that was my intent. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, with that, Bill, I'll let you go ahead and okay. um, <clears throat> I'm Bill Hansel. Nope. Any of you. Um, I've had my architecture practice uh, in Marin for the last uh, 15 years or so. Before that in San Francisco, I lived in the neighborhood for about 14 years and have my architectural practice spans a lot of different types of genres of work. Um, a, a lot of residential work, uh, commercial work, institutional work, and obviously I've, I, I know the area well and I care about the area well. I was on the board of directors for close to 10 years um, and uh, am familiar with the background of our staff and our park needs and I've looked at this a bunch of different ways. So I really appreciate the chance to step uh, into the role of, of being a professional architect and have a different kind of view and to just focus on, on that aspect. Um, so what I did to start out <coughs> was to look at all of the prior <coughs> work that had been done in terms of the, um, the studies that were uh, drawn out that the board and I think the Park and Commission had looked at before and just sort of revisited those and familiarized myself with what had been um, observed and also looked at some sketches by the staff in terms of what their needs are. Eric and I talked about uh, uh, you know, practical things like the program and the area and the use. Um, obviously I've walked my dog up and down the panhandle loads of times so I'm, uh, and as a neighbor myself, I'm sort of trying to be sensitive to the neighboring houses and also just the feel. I mean as an architect what you start out with really is the history of structures in an area, but also the natural environment, um, which direction the sun is coming from, how people are using the space, all those different things. And I think, I'll just say, uh, historically, when we had to uh, do provide buildings, and we meaning 
our society uh, in terms of cities and towns. Um, even even the most just the simplest buildings for the most basic functions, it's still recognized that they were these big objects in our environment, and so it was important how they looked and, and sensitive to how they were designed. And I think in uh, you know we've we sometimes think of like a maintenance facility as something that just just is so bottom of the rung. Uh, utilitarian thing, but it is something that obviously we have to have a lot of sensitivity for, when, especially when it's in a prominent um, place within our parks in a sensitive habitat. So that's that's my general attitude towards approaching this um, as an as an architect. Um, this is the layout of the existing uh, buildings, and I did a little area calc. Uh, it's about 4,500 square feet for the total footprint. Um, that would be the uh, the trailer building as well as the shed, the, the addition onto the shed, the outside areas that are being kind of used for, for storage. And so what I was asked to do, and what was pretty obvious, was to try to find a way to contain all of that stuff. So for uh, visual um, cleanliness and also uh, safety and liabilities, that we'd be able to compact all that stuff into a, you know, as, as usable uh, and contain the space as possible. We also have considerations with setbacks from the creek um, as, as I learned, it was, it's sort of multiple different uh, setbacks uh, relative to, to the bank, uh, the top of the bank, and then the distance to, uh, to the water uh, line, to the creek line. Um, so my considerations of how to place and how to angle the, the building are somewhat constrained by those, largely constrained by, by those uh, dictates. <coughs> um, so the current building is inside of all that setback and we had to move it back away from that and I was, it was shown to me that the, you know, just starting out the, uh, the preference from a sensitivity side to the habitat would be to move it towards the fencing uh, regardless. And I think, um, you know, as someone that's used the, that area of the park for a long time, I, I, I sort of feel like it, it is an entrance to uh, a nice run of, our, of, this, of this trail. And it's never felt that way because you're literally moving you know, through this area. So I think uh, trying to have it where the path, instead of it being you know, cutting and bifurcating this, uh, this utility, bringing it closer to, to, the, to the bank, uh, to the high point of the bank and, and close to the water and close to the trees would be a nicer experience regardless. I'm closer, you know, more fitting to what you experience when you go down the rest of, of the path. So um, just start with that reference. And so this is showing <coughs> the site layout that uh, respects the, the setbacks, it, it uh, is enough where the, the, the main portion of the building, the square footage, uh, is far enough from, from this edge. Obviously, you know, as, as the setback comes around, as the bank comes around, it's pushing the building more in, uh, in this direction. Um, but there still is some setback concerns about, about this side. So it's really, you know, there's not a lot of ways you can, uh, not a lot of movement you can go in an east-west direction. Um, and then north-south, of course, is dictated by the, by the fence line. Um, the, the back of the building, you can see this little dashed line here. That's essentially the retaining wall of the existing trailer. So the back of, of, of this building, this new proposed building, is the exact same as the back of the existing trailer. And it and it's pretty much starts where that, where that trailer, the trailer sits uh, about here to here. So... Um, a couple of other things about the logic of this layout is that uh, the park staff are obviously are, are coming into it and going mostly in this direction, somewhat you know coming down to service other areas this way. And it seemed as if schemes that had uh, access doors, because as a, as a utility building, it's going to have large um, roll-up garage doors, right? So if we were to put those or force the design to have those on this side, it basically means you have to have large turnarounds for the truck and the tractor and all that. So the idea was, it seemed to be the best approach to this would have an entrance that was at the end uh, facing Miller Creek and one where you could drive basically straight through the building and go out the other side. So it, it basically protects all of this for more pedestrian use. Uh, and um, the building itself is, <coughs> 
of condition area, which is a portion of this which actually would have the shop, the workshop in it, the kitchen, uh, toilet room, that would be about 1,200 square feet. And then the other half of this is a roof area, but it's open air. Um, and that's about 1,300 square feet. So it's combined total under roof is about 2,500 square feet. And then we have a entry court at the front with a rolling gate here and a yard at the back, again, with the, with the rolling gate on this side. So the yards, uh, the entry court being about 1,175 square feet, and this would be more of a materials storage area of uh, 785. So the total footprint is about 44, about 100 square feet under the combined total of, of the existing uh, square footage. And I'll comment too that that square footage is actually substantially less than what the uh, staff would like to see because they had done diagrams just based upon what they have and storing it. So we've really tried to constrain this to what minimally is, is uh, workable for them and for the district. The other uh, thing you'll see here, which is just a, a notion about the building, is is the uh, you know the general feeling of moving through this site and this curve, this arcing curve that, that kind of organizes both the path and the, and the front of the building. The building pretty much is a, a rectilinear box to kind of uh, make it most efficient, both for its use and, and also you know, structurally. Um, but I think there are other elements here in terms of this fence and the entry and some of these angles that start to break up the building a little bit more and to give it some more uh, architectural interest. Um, so that's the basic layout. Can I ask um, you a quick question? Yeah, sure. So you said drive-through. I, I don't understand. So you're, you're saying you're trying to do that in the, in okay. the next uh, right. slide, but okay. I'll be sure to, to point, uh, to could, point that out. Yeah. Could you give the rough dimensions? How wide is it and how long is I'll it? Show, I'll show that on the next, okay. uh, the next slide. What I wanted to say here was in terms of a building, um, you know, the, the elements of this are pretty simple. We've got a concrete slab of some size. It's, it's, you know, in this design, it's assumed to be the entire square footage under the roof, as opposed to the courtyards, uh, the entry court and the, and the rear yard, which are assumed to be like a, you know, a, a permeable surface, like a gravel or a decomposed granite. Um, the, so you have X amount of, of uh, concrete, which is the structural base, and then you have a roof, and the idea is to, Rather than have multiple roofs that are uh, sort of complicating the structure, just use the simplicity of, of, of a single roof and cover the interior space as well as some of the space that would protect the assets of the district, like the trucks uh, and you know all the gear that, and also that they could work under that area, but just as under one one simple roof. Um, and then the other consideration is because of noise and sound and moving closer to our neighbors would be that the, the back wall of this building is, is a, a sound wall, essentially. And there are different ways you can achieve that. It could be through uh, a heavy, like a concrete wall, could be a, a CMU block wall, could be a rammed earth wall, uh, it could be a, a wall that's built up. But the main point is, uh, depending upon the expense and, you know, and the look that's acceptable. Um, but the main idea is that by having this sort of single back wall, we can, we can at least contain the noise uh, to the residences in, in the back. So I'm going to show you an enlarged plan, get into some of the dimensions, which, uh, let's see if I can focus this. Separate. Uh, Let me go a bit overall, Stephen. I might have to get back into the, uh, the actual dimensions. Um, so this is a blow up of the of the building itself. Um, you can still see some of the setback lines, and there's an additional line which is dictating, you know, how close uh, this edge can come. <clears throat> so the forecourt has a has a rolling gate here, or a series of rolling gates, to at least be able to separate that off. Um, so there could be some car storage, there could be some materials uh, that are kept in that forecourt. Then there would be um, an open door or possibly a, a rolling door uh, that comes into the roof area. So the roof is covering this and you could, I'm uh, just sizing it so that we could fit the F250 uh, in there and some of the other equipment. But it could also be cleared out and used as working space that's, that's still protected from, uh, from the elements. 
And then driving through that, you'd have the two, the two enclosures. This is really the enclosure of the conditioned area, the, the uh, heated space. So we have the rolling door here and rolling door here. This is the workshop area. You have a little break room with a kitchenette and the restroom. And then these areas in the <coughs> violet are, uh, are storage areas. And to a certain degree, this, this might be open as well. This is something that we could get into um, further down the line. The other thing to keep in mind about this is sort of just securing the assets of the district and multiple security levels. So everything is behind. These fences would be eight feet high. And then beyond that, you have this other area. Uh, and then, you know, the workshop itself. And then another area of tool storage. So a lot of ways to kind of, you know, protect. Right now, it's, everything is pretty, pretty loose and available in the shop. Um, and then this rear court, which is, again, kind of being dictated by the curb back and just enough space to be able to store some of the materials. And then a, a gate here, <clears throat> although I think most of the traffic would be going in and out the front. So, um, I'll, I'll give you rough dimensions. I think that the, these bays are about um, 12 feet, if I recall. So, but the, you know, overall, I think we started out with about a 40 foot depth. And uh, we went through last, last week, we kind of tightened it up a little bit more. I think it might be down to like 37 feet or so. But <laughs> some of that is dictated by structural bays, columns that are wide enough that you don't have a lot of them in the workshop or that they get in the way of cars, but, um, but also not too far apart that it gets into more expensive uh, construction types. And then these are 20 foot bays, so about 80 feet uh, across. So roughly 40 by, by 80 just for the, for the building. Again, maybe just slightly less than that. Um, <clears throat> so taking that plan, and we, we looked at a few uh, variations of it, as I said with Eric, and then started to think about the architecture itself for the building. And um, in this area, other than the architecture that's been here since the, you know, 40s and 50s, um, developments in the 60s, um, there's no real sort of historical precedent. Although the Miwok architecture, you know, what was built um, that relies on sort of simple lean-to types of, uh, uh, of structures is something that I, you know, I thought to be nice to reference. Even materially, um, you know, bark and exposed wood uh, would be nice to highlight, in, you know, in the, in the building. Um, the fence design, so we looked at some just different ideas about horizontal fences with different slats. These would be for the courtyards. I think this is the one you're going to see rendered. Um, some that are, are a little bit different in terms of vertical versus horizontal. Um, the idea of referencing or sort of working off of the, the Miwok architecture was that maybe some of the columns could, could be oriented in, a, in an angle, uh, racing type of form. To reference that, so these are and in the current rendering that's shown as uh, metal pipe columns, but they they could also be wood columns. Um, we even talked about having some more natural wood columns to to uh, bring more of a, a feeling of, of a natural sort of architecture to it. Um, there were some more elegant fences, and the idea of just having some greenery that that starts to uh, cover and. Build the build, put the building more into the landscape or being part of the landscape, sort of this image. <clears throat> in terms of the main uh, walls, the wraps, uh, I think what was leaning towards and rendering a vertical uh, wood siding, again, that, that looks you know, very natural in the feel of, of the area. Although there are ways that we could kind of make it, um, you know, bring in something a little bit more contemporary or modern, like a, a corrugated metal. Or, um, this was an idea that, that uh, the high side of the building, if I go to, let's take a step back here. So the idea is that this side being on the fence side, the fence, I think the top of the fence of up here, um, relative to the grade level, is, is about 12 feet or so. And so in the design, the idea is not to go higher than 12 feet for the low side of the building here, and then to raise up on this side and to use clear story light, high windows to be able to bring light, natural light into the space. Um, and so in order to shade some of that light, 
and also build it into the architecture, the general architecture, maybe including some of the same wood material, but bringing it up in slat form above, above the clearer story. So you start to put all these things together, and we looked at uh, some early 3D models, but I'm just going to jump to the to the rendering, which looks like this. So here's the four-core facade. This is looking from, from the west. Um, so there would be an entry down here. Um, you can see that the roof, this is the condition space, basically this half here. And then this is the space that's roofed over to you know, get more protection and access and usefulness for the building. Um, this is the 12-foot line and coming up. And then so where is it in the front there? You keep saying 12 in the back, but what's, what's it in the front? Uh, 15 feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The minimal slope is a, usually it's a 2 and 12 slope. Um, uh, but the height limit would be 15 feet regardless from what I understand. Um, so that's, that's basically what I, what I worked off of. Um, and then the integration of these, these metal columns to start to refer to some of that uh, lean-to kind of, kind of architecture with the wood fence across the front and then the slats um, up here. Review from the east. And uh, building on top of this, I mean, the, uh, it was interesting to uh, look at the abstract things with the plan and then start to really look at the mass of the building. And even in the time since I met with, with Eric, once I started to visualize this thing, these renderings, realized uh, how I could tweak some elements and add some elements. Um, I think there's opportunities here uh, for the district for, for artwork or other kinds of educational things relative to the Creekside. I think, I think it would be interesting to to add that to you know to the building in terms of maybe some some panels along the side along the front that were these educational um, elements for the walk or talk about the, uh, the, you know, the use of the area or the history of the area. Right now it's just kept to the simple architecture, <coughs> um, and just trying to you know make it something that seems appropriate to both in keeping with the architecture that we already have here, uh, as as well as something that has natural materials um, that uh, that are f correct for you know uh, for a park for the park setting. So this uh, the area to the left. I'm looking at the peak there. Kind of looks like an iceberg, which I kind of like. The the <laughs> this area to the left is that all open space? Is that oh down here? Yeah, yeah. You, you yes. talked about the covered space that wasn't part of the building. Is that what it is? Oh, uh, okay. So, I'm just trying to keep in mind. There's so you see these four bays. One, yeah. two, three, four. You can refer okay. to the plan. Um, so the four bays are right here. Okay, so, so the, the, the 15 feet high, the high roof cup basically is this dashed line from here to here. And then, and then all of the fencing around the, the, the yards is uh, at 8 feet. Okay, so those wings, they, you're not seeing that in the rendering? Right? Those wings are, uh, I'll show you, they are in there. That's uh, this. And this is cur curving around a little bit hard to tell in there, and then this one is, is curving around to the back side. Okay. That's the image that you're seeing is from so, the back side. Eric, yeah. this is, I think, well, maybe it's for all you. So last time we were here a year ago, mm -hmm. and looking at these drawings here, there was a couple different locations discussed. The existing, right. the one by the firehouse, right. and on drawing three, I think it was, and one of these other ones kind of more down behind Terry's house. Right. So has the decision been made by the board that those are not going to be considered and this is what's going to be moving forward? No, the, this hasn't come to the board at that level yet. All the board okay. has got is updates. I will uh, show you that if you want to refer to them. Yeah, sure. just This was uh, the scheme one yeah. that basically just put the building down yeah. here, which is all completely in the, the setback area. So it's not really oh, okay. feasible. It kind of takes it off the table. Yeah, I have a question. Um, be this. specific on which setback you're referring to. Uh, if you can give me just one second, I'll, yeah, back okay. and I'll show you. Um, so this is just the option two, um, where again, here's the existing building, but trying to push it back, but keeping the uh, uh, trailer uh, still in the setback, 
This one uh, was a little harder to see, <coughs> was having a stretched out building way down. As you know, the building that I'm showing you tonight is, is basically here compared to that. And <coughs> in terms of the setback, I think the easiest way on this one. So I, have, I was given a, a topo which had different uh, elevation marks for, for this entire area. Um, and I took the elevation mark for the creek bed here, which is essentially this is the, the center line of that. And then this is the high uh, bank elevations. Uh, so as I understand it, Eric, go ahead to correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong but the, we have two different setbacks. One is the 20, a 20 foot setback from the high bank point. And so that's this parallel line here. This other line, by the way, is just the, like the drip edge of the trees. So, so this is one, so that's not a problem. But the other one <coughs> is taking the vertical height dimension from the top of the bank down to the creek, um, which you can tell here, you can see when the contour lines get close together, you're seeing a steeper bank, right, when they're further apart. So when you walk down behind the existing building, you can see this is a lot of more you know, gentler slope. So if you take this uh, elevation, and then that distance, and then double it and add 20 feet. Correct. Right. And so, so that's the point where if you you know kind of look at this thing, it's not as simple a line, even as, as as this one is. Okay. So but, I, but it's but it's basically pushing pushing us <coughs> back to that point. Okay. So this may be the reason I wasn't invited. And I I don't. First of all, I'm really happy that they. They hired you, Bill, and I honestly mean that because I know you love the community and you, you obviously have great taste and everything. Um, the, I, I'm just going to say this. I did do some independent checking. There, the historically, it's 25 feet from the top of the bank, okay, which, you know, where's the top of the bank? I, I don't know how they, they judge that. But they proposed that it be 100 feet, and that's what the county has been using. So it's a little... Right now, it's kind of, in a, I don't want to call it a gray area, it's a dispute, area in dispute. Um, if you take 100 feet, and, and it also includes the drainage ditch, which is called a, a ephemeral stream or something like that. It's part, it's considered part of the waterway. And it actually comes within a very short period. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. Right. Um, it comes with a very short distance, like 20 feet from the back of their fence line. So, I, I actually think it may be, that's for a discussion for another day, but I, I, I think it needs to be recognized um, before all the beautiful plans get made that, you know, this is really a fundamental challenge. Um, and as far as speaking to the environmental uh, authorities, I talked to the county, the same people Eric talked with, and I got a very different response. They're not the regulators who would decide this, and that's, that's really going to be the critical component. I love your talents. I love. I'd love to see this. It, it, your your talents used in other parts of the, the park. Um, hopefully, you know we get something beautiful here. But setbacks. That's going to be. That's going to be an important issue. So I. Um, the, the, uh, and, uh, I appreciate that. I, I'm just going to can work with any setback that anybody tells me. But okay. you know, assuming that a building can actually be placed there, I just tell you that. In terms of uh, you know establishing the information, the the top of the bank, as far as I know, until somebody tells you differently, is is the highest point of the elevations uh, surrounding the, the creek edge and the drainage ditch, which is what you pointed out. Yeah. So uh, this this line is is that that point, and then I guess we can establish what you know other other rules are. But um, you know you can see at a certain point as you move further this way. You start to get into you know, this distance from the from the uh, drainage drainage creek. So um, you know, and at a certain point as well, when you start to reduce this depth of the building, it becomes less and less you know, useful of the space. Um, uh, you know, proportionally, I think right now it's working out pretty well. Uh, we, like I said, we already cut about four or five feet off of it from the previous designs. Um, and uh, the base structure, in terms of where these you know, columns are, you can see, still is enough to allow the drive-through. 
And that's you know, one of my concerns with just a building there at all is that as people are, are walking through here, that we take them out of the line of traffic of, that they currently experience, where they're, you're literally walking in between guys that are driving trucks back and forth and, uh, and, and areas that are open or doors that are left open into workshops, um, which all of this would, would contain. So anyway, that's... Uh, now, what's on, on that left wing? Is that primarily parking for the trucks in there, or what is it? You know, I imagine that uh, uh, what would happen here is that, okay. whereas I've shown yeah. cars and trucks, and these are more for just getting a sense of the size right. rather than how it would actually be used, but I imagine that, uh, you know, the storage that they need would end up using, storage meaning uh, in this area it might be gravel storage or uh, with chips or you know yeah. all those things that we want to get out, out of just visible like they are now. right so i think a lot of that stuff would be on the perimeter of this okay. and what you might find is that cars would be parked at night when they're not being used or the truck in the middle of bays and then during the day then they'd be using them they'd be pulling pulling them out um, and from what i can tell again standing looking at the <coughs> fence line a second i can So here's the view down between fences and the existing trailer. So what I'm saying is that the what you're seeing uh, in this new design is that the, the back of the building would be uh, at about that point. And <clears throat> I think you know this this fence, I believe it's your fence, right? Mm -hmm. It's slightly lower because this one has the extra wow. 16 inches or so lattice above. But um, yeah, I, th I think given the the if there are any view lines, that would be kind of obscured by by the height of this fence. In fact, I'd recommend maybe uh, trying to for for your fence that you know you get it up a little bit higher to be able to protect that. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Does it? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I just want a couple comments if that's okay. I'm trying to be collaborative, not competitive here. You know, one of the things about that parking, it was it was brought up by Peter. I think his name is he, he lives across the street from the, the driveway over there. It's just looking down that trail, man. It, it's a really cool view. Kind of like, you know, it's unending down there. You can't see the end, mm -hmm. which makes it kind of cool. And same from coming the other way. So now you have a big kind of building in there. I mean, it is what it is, but maybe if you put that out to people, that you might get some pushback from that. That was my no, it's, it's very valid point. But it? it's a yeah. beautiful building. I like the way it looks and everything. But I think there's that to be considered in there. It's it's kind of it, it is in a sense to me it's like a gateway. You know, you have yeah, two gateways is. to this area, and yeah. this is one of them. And and we're if the drainage ditch we're not pushing it back north, right. I'd say that that maintaining that view would be a great idea. I, I think the you know in Atten being forced to kind of push the building yeah. more into the area that you're talking about. What that means is that you know we need to realign the path and plant some new trees. I didn't point that out, but I was indicating. Need to indicate that um, in terms of the trees, there are, you know those pines, which are incredibly messy and not really the best <laughs> to have at the entry as well. Um, one of them would is would have to be taken out. It's right here. It's the one that's uh, you know like right out in front of the uh, existing shed. And then there's a couple of there's another one over here, I think, but. In, in clearing that area to make room for the for the space, I would plant some new oaks, maybe, or some other species uh, along here, so that you could create, really design, like take that nice aspect of the view and, and try to, you know, bend it around, tweak it around, and make the path, uh, you know, nice. But so that kind of is what this guy brought up last time. Is this a park or a maintenance area? And that's why the fourth option, which I don't. I think you had it there, down by the fire department was brought up last time. I, I, I wasn't it. asked to look at that, so I, okay. it's not. It's okay, not well, that's, that's more for the board. And then that takes the problem of looking straight down there. You know, then it's not a problem, and it's a park. Now it's, it's a nice building, 
I'm just bringing that up because I guarantee you somebody's going to bring that up along the line. Mm -hmm. And another question about the functionality of that building. So you got this drive-through. Um, what does that accomplish? Because that means you've got uh, at least the width of a truck, say 10 feet, to go through there. Mm -hmm. That's going to be unused, except because you're not going to have stuff stored there because you want to drive it. Your truck through. Right. So I don't understand. I, it, it's, it, you know, it came out of the idea of, of that they do uh, you know, park things at night and store things at night and pull them out and make the space. So having some area where it's, it's okay that during the day yeah. it would be vacated and you could use it in some other areas where it's dedicated. And so, so yeah. and, and we just talked about this the other day because we had the staff uh, you know, look at this and they felt that the um, that having, I mean, you could take that away and save a little bit of money on the, on the rolling door and just drive around the building. But it's it's nice to have the option if you did have to load something through and, and get it out. So it's, well, I think of it less as kind of like it's not like service vehicles are going to be driving yeah. through there. It's more like flexibility of access for, for use. That's all. But as, as was said last time, it, it's nice to wish for stuff. That doesn't mean you get it. Sure. And if you walk around the neighborhood, everybody parks their cars out in front. How many people put their car? indoors and so why do you need to have them indoors? Oh, only because these are not your typical residential cars that you see parked in the street. It's just trying to Yeah, you know, truck to truck. I mean that I mean it's parked right out here. Right. I mean that's a question that's it's a, it's a really up. valid point. I mean um, it's, it's and I don't know how what your budget is and you know we haven't got to that point but you can save some budget by why you you know or why don't you know why don't you at the end of the building there is it covered at that end at the left wing? Not not okay. the not the yard, not the entry yard. Okay. So this is obviously okay. not covered in the same thing on the other okay. side. Yeah. Okay. And we talked about the fact that you could I mean you could uh, you know not cover some of these other areas too. Uh, you know, in, in terms of cost, yeah. I don't know if I do it just for cost because if I'm yeah. if I'm buying more area for my employees to work and I have trucks that are not sitting out yeah. under well, the rain. I'll just go back to my original point. It seems like Oh, I don't know if cost is a factor or not. But if, if at some point, you know, you talk about moving the building and you can knock 10 feet out of it for some reason. Sure. How that. much further does it protrude out uh, from where the trailer is? Sure. Let me see if I can go back and forth to uh, see that. So you can. Let's just kind of get a benchmark here relative to the, the fence line, the property line right there. And this line should stay the same to the new. Yeah. Yeah, so currently the trailer is, I'd say, you know, there, there. That's. So this would be about, this is another two bays, so I'd say about 40 feet. 40, 40 feet further. The existing trailer, I think, is 40, so this is doubling, doubling that. Oh, and I should say, we, we did look. <laughs> at you know trying to find other ways to save the trailer, but the thing is that uh, you know I think the useful life of that trailer is you know such that if it stays and it forces the other building into you know less of a desirable location and even pushes the trailer even further away, you're just getting a diminishing return. So the idea of, of uh, you know integrating that into the into the new and also some of that trailer space is not. Uh, that square footage is not just not useful. The bathroom's useful, having a little bit of the kitchen, but there's a lot of it that is really not uh, as valuable as the square footage in here. Do you have a, a measurement showing the, how far out the new building sticks in relation to where the current thing is? I'm just trying to get a sure idea. You see these numbers now? So. Uh, the existing, so if we say the existing is about 40 feet, and, uh, and again, right about here to here, you can see the, the 20 and the 20, so that's that's about the existing trailer. Okay, so that's the right? existing And then 12 trailer. feet, I think yeah. that's probably about what the, what the depth is. So it's almost as if this block here would okay. be the existing I, I was asking, so at the dimension on the bottom yeah. here. Uh -huh. here no, I'll show you. <laughs> so this is going to be the, the new wall right here, that's right? right. Okay, where is the existing building? In, was it right oh, that, that's the building, yeah. sure. Uh, I can stay up there, Don. Huh? I can stay up there. Uh, you can 
can see that this is the tr this is the yeah pine. Okay. Pine. Okay. Yeah. And so you that would come out. Your hand there? Uh, yeah. Exactly. Here. <laughs> this is the current bubble. Thank you. Pine. Can people see? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, oh, thank you. Again, it's, it's, it's very easy to look at this and say, well, to me, easy to be and say, here's the top of the bank, here's 20 feet. That's a simple setback to understand. This other setback that has to do with the, the vertical distance, not the horizontal distance, from, from the top to the, you know, the water line, mm -hmm. uh, is, is misleading because as you come over here, this is, is, you see all these lines really close together, it's much steeper, which then means that you get more of a setback. So the further this comes, uh, I was starting to get to the point where it was, you know, into the setback from this side. Um, Thank you. Yeah, in terms of sliding it down, I think there, you know, it might be able to come a certain distance relative, to, but at some point you'd, you'd hit that conflict. Basically, the building is having to become more and more narrow and more long, so the right. overall footprint would be larger right. because you'd have to get the same amount of area you have. To what about going yeah, down further where you're further away from the creek? There's that whole area. Further you go down. In this no, the other direction. This one? Yeah. I mean, you have more. Well, no, same, same problem. Because, <laughs> you, it's, again, it's misleading because of the, if you start to do the calculation. But I mean, no, she's talking about I'm, the I'm open talk, space yeah. that you get down there. You past, know, the the out, past the uh, Oh, out. way down. Okay. Because then you're really away from the creek. That's right. And you can build a bigger building. Yeah. If all you want to do is have a, a garage in the park. I, well, I know. Well, I'm not yeah. saying I want a garage in the park, but yeah. I don't want anything behind Yeah, I will say, either. I mean, again, just to, <laughs> sorry, just for comment for Stephen okay. um, I mean, these are, these are all really, you know, valid considerations. And, and I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we were able to at least to get this far to be able to visualize something rather than. Can you really do sure. the one at the top overlay up here? And and then the second thing I, I would ask, because it's the one thing that I feel is partly the elephant in the room is, my, and this is just my understanding, and I could be I could be wrong, so please correct me. So like, it, we, one factor of many uh, is that the utilities and everything is right here for that right now with the cost savings of, and right now it's X, right? That if we were to put it anywhere else down like whatever the things are I, what is that like what does that cost if we, if we did, I, and, and i'm not i guess i'm not really looking for like to the you know to the penny to the dollar but like if it to take a sewer line it would it costs ballpark i'm gonna make a number 100 per linear foot right and so if we move it down x amount the sewer line alone is going to estimate at this electrical is going to estimate at this right so if we would have if we were to look at Fireman Hill, whatever that you're gonna call this thing is, to bring in infrastructure, it's gonna cost before we do anything else, X. Right. So that everything that's like the starting point of just so just the cost, I'm no, saying I, just, I, just I, the cost perspective. We could talk about everything else, but just so as a I feel like we need a baseline of that, because that is zero here, right? And everything else is going to be that plus whatever structure, as simple or as complex as it is. So, to that so end, if that's just the yeah. only thing that I have in my mind that I would like as a baseline. And, and Eric mentioned it, but I'll just let me explain a little bit more. So, in my experience, um, especially with public projects where you have to, uh, you know, bid, go through bid process, and you really, um, with private projects, you can get into more of a negotiated bid right. where you're, you're refining things. It's not so formalized. The, the discussion is. 
there's actually discussion rather than just a you know a bidding period and then suddenly you find out the bad news. Uh, so I think it's uh, what, what I brought to the table. Um, Eric and I talked to this guy is a cost estimator, which is a total separate you know professional, not tied into any particular construction company with the biases to either go you know too low or too high. And uh, and, and he's available. He's given us a proposal to uh, to uh, take this minimal amount of, of work and to start to put some real numbers. And he's the exact kind of person that would also provide exactly what we were talking about. Okay. And so we've we established that relationship now. It'll help us to, as we tweak things or as you come up with you know questions or other sites, uh, and at least it'll, it'll be someone uh, to, to give that information. Okay. Didn't we already start having that discussion at the board meeting under the district matters and number seven? There was, a, there was a ballpark estimate of uh, 81 grand, but that, that's not by, done by right. cost estimator. Okay, <laughs> I just was wondering like, where it's that came from. I, couple, couple, I'd like to throw out a couple more things. First of all, with, if we had a, a structure over here, John, um, uh, next to the firehouse, you could put solar. It's actually perfect for solar because it's a south facing. Uh, area so yeah that could put 6k where there's uh, solar panels up so number one number two if you had if, if you simply did an extension or a, uh, of this building and, and just using it for a garage bay um, I don't think you'd have to do all the, all the improvements that uh, the kitchen sink was thrown out with this estimate so I looked at that estimate and I said, they're figuring out everything and they're, you know, the worst case scenario, but they're not really thinking about, you know, how they can economize. Now, there's one other option to consider. We may not actually have a fire department if we, uh, here, if we, uh, if we merge with San Rafael. So maybe they would rather build a new firehouse down near the county offices, which would be, uh, you know, obviously that's a political issue, but if they did that, then all of a sudden we've got the, the fire department um, area available for a maintenance area. So I, I just think, you know, so many things are up in the air right now as far as the district, that we need to, certainly the, the, the uh, fire department issue should be settled before we figure out what a, a real long-term uh, plan for our maintenance department is. Preschool for future All right. All right. So I would. Oh, it's all good. Um, just kind of curious about the size as well. And is there is there a possibility to park the vehicle somewhere else? It seems like the size is, you know, dependent upon parking of vehicles. Is there? Do we have another location where we can store vehicles? Parking lot. I mean, obviously we can't do that because parking there is so scarce. Right. Well, we're not going to put a riding mower and a tractor yeah. or any two utility vehicles out there either. No, right, but like trucks. Mm -hmm. with, parking like, lot. There's just nowhere else we have, huh? No. Yeah. It really isn't. You know, uh, uh, especially not in this vicinity other than being in that area. And again, one of the main things coming out of this was to be able to protect them to some degree, right? You know, I mean, they're right. you know large assets, uh, rolling stock investments, uh, and I like what Bill put together here by kind of making a little bit more of a enclosed carport as opposed to coming up with the indoor space needed to you know finished space needed to be able to do all of that. I thought was incredibly uh, cost-effective way. Uh, you know, to his point, and Bill kind of had to sell me on it too. Is, you know, it just, you're just talking about a single roof that would go across, and then, you know, the enclosed finish area being over here, and then this out part is just more, you know, it's a workable area, but it's not enclosed, it's not finished, it's, you know, it's roofed, it's walled to a specific height, and then becomes open air around the outside, which would be a, a much better scenario than how things are kind of being stored right now. Uh, especially in terms of the truck and the tractor. You know, we shoved the lawnmower into the current shed, uh, we shoved the two utility vehicles for the most part into the current shed. The dump truck's going away. 
Um, you know, the next time that thing needs a major service, it's probably. Right. Uh, one point about that too is that we're, we've started parking the, the F-150 in the parking lot here because it was getting vandalized over by the park shop. And vandalism has been an ongoing issue over the years. Um, so that's not the consideration why like, we don't want the vehicle. We prefer not to have the vehicles out in the open if possible because um, that's just something that, that does tend to happen from time to time. So um, leaving it out there exposed um, has been an issue. So. As opposed to parking in front of the house where you will hear when somebody smashes into your car. Although there is, as we see on the next door, periodically there are break ins and various things in cars. So. So there's there's definitely benefits to the surrounding, yeah. I think we're with it. The fire department would be even better, 24 hours. Yeah. All right, so with that, uh, thank you. Thank no, you. No, thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, well, I had to have a question. Thank you. No, it's good yeah. conversation. Hello, I think it's a beautiful building. Um, That's good to I, do, I do like the idea of the IFRS. Thank you. Okay. Um, so with that, we're going to move to the new item number four, which is um, on the agenda. Oh, well, actually, I pretty much covered everything. I, I wanted to talk about this, and I was surprised by it. I, I really urge you guys to wrestle with the question, you know, what is our parks and open space for? This is what, what is the most important thing. The guys who work for us, the great guys, but basically, you know, they're serving the parks and open space, and we need to prioritize um, the open space a whole lot more uh, and the enjoyment of, of, of our parks. And um, I just think, you know, we kind of, the whole, the whole thing here is, is, well, we did it this way last year, let's do it this way again, that way again this year. Let's let's think in terms of you know big vision. We we we've, we've evolved as a community, and we're now million dollar homes. And 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 you know what kind of what what do we want to be? And I I think Marinwood being the, the best open space and rec department uh, in in uh, Marin County is is something we should strive for. So that's that's really absolutely all I have to say. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you. We'll move on to item number five. 